In exercise 17.22, we are again trying to predict the products of some electrocyclic reactions, and they're called electrocyclic reactions because the pi electrons in a conjugated system are moving around to form a ring. So that's the electro for those electrons that are moving, and the cyclic for the ring that they're forming. So to keep track of everything, it's nice to number each of the carbons in the conjugated ring, the conjugated system. And I'm also going to use colors to help track where these pi electrons are moving. So we've got those there. So they're always going to move in a ring. So pick a direction, and we'll move them in that direction. I'm going to pick clockwise. So these greens, those will move to form a new sigma bond between carbon 1 and 6. The purple pi electrons will move to form a new pi bond between 4 and 5, and the blue pi electrons will move to form a new pi bond between 2 and 3. So I'm going to draw that ring. We'll worry about everything coming off of it in a second. First, I just want to track how those electrons are moving. So we'll have a new sigma bond between carbon 1 and 6. That's this green one here. So that's a new sigma bond. The purple pi electrons, that's going to be a new pi bond between 4 and 5. And the blue electrons, that's going to be a new pi bond between 2 and 3. So that's the ring. Now let's fit those branches on. We have a branch, a methyl branch coming off of 3, a methyl branch coming off of 4. And we also have methyl branches coming off of the end of the conjugated pi system. We need to know if those are going to be cis or trans when these bonds rotate in order to make the molecular orbitals overlap to create the ring. So what we have is a 6 we have six pi electrons with three conjugated pi bonds. So we know we're dealing with the right side of that table, which you would want to have memorized. We see H nu. That means that we're dealing with light. And when we look at these branches coming off, we see that the top one is going up and the bottom one is going down. So if you're going up and down, then that should be trans. So we'll have one of these going up and the other going down. And I could have drawn it the other way. So you'll also get, in addition to that product that we just drew, you'll also get the enantiomer, which is if you draw it the other way. In that case, the two chiral centers that you have in the molecule, this one and this one, switch. In, the, in each of these two products. And so you get a mixture of these two, and together they are the answer to what happens when you take this molecule and shine some light on it. Now, all these electrocyclic reactions are reversible. So not only are these rings forming, but they're coming undone uh, um, again at the same time to give you back your original product. So the, these, all, all of these molecules exist in equilibrium. So here, they're giving you this ring and they're asking you, what, what does it look like when the ring comes undone? Now remember that when three conjugated pi bonds forms a ring, that ring will have two pi bonds left. You just use one of the pi bonds to form the sigma bond, to form the ring. If, you only, if after you form the ring, you only have one pi bond left, then that means you must have started with only two conjugated pi bonds. So we're dealing with that column there. We also know we see H nu here, so we're dealing with light. And we see that the branches coming off of this ring are cis. And the only way they could be cis is if those branches are coming are going up and down. So let me highlight that. We'll come back to that. We know that those branches must be going up and down, those two methyl branches here. 
Okay, we can number the carbons in the ring. That's where things are going to be changing. And so let's just draw those. And when you have this ring formed already, you take the pi bond and you move it in one direction. So here I'm going to go clockwise. And then you take the sigma bond that's opposite it and you move that in that same direction. So this, in this case, also clockwise. So to help track those, I'll put colors on them. So here, that was this. So we end up, those blue electrons, those end up moving to form a pi bond between carbon number one and carbon number two. And the purple electrons, those end up moving to form a pi bond between carbon three and carbon four. We still have that six-membered ring to the left. And these methyl groups, as we saw at the very beginning, those, one is going up and the other is going down. So one would be going up, the other would be going down. And it doesn't really matter which one's going up, which one's going down. So here for our purposes. So here, this is a little awkward because the bond angles are recalling the ring, so it's nice to redraw that molecule. with the right bond angles. And then one of the methyl groups will be going up, and one of the methyl groups will be going down. So that's one possibility. And you could have drawn it the other way. I would accept that too. That's another possibility for something, for a way that the ring can come undone. If you had the top one going down and the bottom one going up, that would be another acceptable answer. So either of these would be answers that I would find acceptable for, how, for what would happen to this molecule when you shine some light on it. So here we have three conjugated pi bonds. Let's number that conjugated system. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I will color the electrons here so we can follow them a little more easily. So first let's just worry about the ring. I'm going to draw that the six carbons. And then we'll worry about all the stuff attached after we move the electrons around. So once you have uh, those, those pi bonds and, and the, the conjugated system clearly organized, just pick a direction. Here I'm going to pick clockwise and move all of those pi electrons in that direction. So here the, the pi electrons between carbon 1 and 2 are going to go to form a sigma bond between carbon 1 and 6. The purple pi electrons are going to move over to form a new pi bond between 4 and 5, and the blue ones are going to move over to form a new pi bond between 2 and 3. So here we'll have those green electrons moving to form a sigma bond between 1 and 6. The purple pi electrons are moving to form a pi bond between 4 and 5. And the blue pi electrons are going to move over to form a pi bond between 2 and 3. To the left of that, we still have that six-membered ring. And now we just need to worry about these branches. So the branches, the methyl group is coming off of carbon number 1 and carbon number 6. Will those be cis or trans? 
when the molecular orbitals overlap to form the ring, the new sigma bond in the ring. Okay, well, we have a three, three conjugated pi bonds. So we're dealing with that far right corner. We have heat, so we're dealing with the top two rows. So now we're over here. And you can see that each of these branches are going up. So the methyl group on top is going up, methyl group on the bottom is going up. If you have them both going up or both going down, they must be trans when they form the ring. So you'd want to have those methyl groups as trans. And you've now created chiral centers. So those are two chiral centers, and there's no preference for one for the, either of the chiral centers to be a certain configuration. And so you're going to get a mixture. A mixture where here the top one, instead of coming out at us, will be going away. And the bottom one, instead of going away, will come out. So that switches the chirality from R to S or S to R. And so those would be the answer together. They would be the answer for the product you'd get for this electrocyclic uh, rearrangement.